Good morning, Photo Tribe, and welcome back to the vlog. So today is gonna be a Canon and Nikon day. A little bit of rumors, a little bit of fact, a bunch of commentary. So before I get into it, please, if you haven't went over to my website, jchristina.com in the past, please check it out. I've invented some photography tools for maybe you and your business. If there's something that you like, please pick it up and support me. That would be stellar. So let me start out with the Nikon. The Nikon D750 is a bit long in the tooth, as we all know, and there needs to be a successor to it. There needs to be a revamp, an update. Well, there hasn't been a formal announcement as of yet. Yesterday, something happened that kind of informally announces a successor to the D750. On a Slovenian camera retailer site, a page came up that showed a Nikon D760. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Anyways, the Nikon D760, the specs literally looked identical to the D750, with one exception. It shows up as having 4K, guys. So that is really nice. That means you're gonna get a low cost, full frame camera from Nikon that will also have 4K in it. Really, really cool. So I personally think on a camera retailer shelf near you, you're gonna see a Nikon D760 very, very soon. Now let me move into Canon. Now this is really interesting, really interesting. Let me preface this with saying that whenever a camera manufacturer come out with a camera that has, let's say, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built into it, there is testing, there is authorization, there is whatever you wanna call it that goes on in the background that has to be done. Let's say certification, whatever. Now, when that is done, that testing is done, each one of the cameras are labeled with a code name. For example, the Canon 5D Mark IV, I believe was codenamed K349, I believe it was. Now, this is the same thing that just happened as of yesterday. There was eight cameras that came out, ranging from three compact cameras, one quote unquote mirrorless camera, two crop sensors, and two full frame. Now bear in mind here, guys, even though there's eight, some of them can be redundant. Some of them are duplicates. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll put two or three different iterations of the same camera in there for testing, for certification, or whatever you wanna call it. So they might not be different cameras. There might not be eight coming down the pipe very soon, but there might be, all right? So to start out with the three compact cameras, we're not really as interested in the compact series. It's probably going to be something that's in the power shot. So let's say the G7, the G9, the G1, right? So it might be a Mark III. So maybe it'll be, let's say, for example, a G1X Mark III that's coming down the pipe. We don't know, but that definitely shows up here according to the specs. Also, an APS-C mirrorless shows up. Now, I'm gonna guess that that's probably one of their M-series cameras. So we went from the M3 to M5, the M6. Now we have the M50. So maybe this is a Canon M60. I don't know. But it is definitely an APS-C mirrorless camera that they're working on or certifying. Let's just call it. Next, two crop sensors. Like, for example, the SLRs, like a 7D or maybe a... 80D successor. So it could be possibly a 7D Mark III or maybe the 90D that we know is going to be coming. And both will have 4K. We know this. So that could be also down the pipe. Finally, most importantly, and the thing that I really want to discuss with you guys is the full frame. Now, the original 5D Mark IV, like I said, was called the K349. The new one that is currently out there, or the new two, is a K433 and a K424. Fours, right? I'm going to guess that this is not, not a Nikon 5D Mark V. Okay, I just don't think so. I have a feeling that these two cameras are two iterations of one camera, and that is, let's call it a 5DM, okay? Which would be, let's say, a 5D mirrorless camera. Now, the specs on these two cameras are almost identical to the 5D Mark IV, okay? So, my question to you guys, and what I'm going to speculate here, if this is their full-frame mirrorless play, like I think it is, 
Will it be an EF accepting body? Will this be a larger, like 5D body that will allow for EF lenses to be put onto it on their mirrorless play, on their full frame mirrorless play, instead of mirrorless lenses? Now, this is major speculation, but if it is the case, this would be monstrous. This would be mega guys, mega, where everyone else is going to be looking to come up with a brand new line of lenses, which we know is very difficult. If Canon can now make a mirrorless full frame that's a little bit of a larger body that can accept EF lenses, I don't even know, guys. Now, we know that Canon has that curved sensor that they invented. That curved sensor now not only is curved, but it can be changed internal to the camera. So what that means is if you put on, for example, an EF 70 to 200, it can curve to that lens. If you put on, for example, a mirrorless lens, it can curve to that specific to the lens. That is a major feat if they actually make that work. Now we know, and you know I've been down on Canon forever. I've been a Canon shooter for about 20 years, but I'm not a fanboy. I don't care what I'm shooting with. If I'm shooting fashion, I'm shooting Hasselblad. If I'm shooting, whatever it is, there's a specific tool for every job. And not one camera manufacturer does it right 100% of the time. We all know that. But if Canon can actually make this happen, that they can make a larger mirrorless body, let's call it the 5DM, except EF lenses, I don't even know. That would be revolutionary. And that would really put a damper on all of the people migrating currently over to Sony. Because Sony, like I've always said, is currently eating the lunch of Canon and Nikon. They're just crushing it. And they're doing an exceptional job. And their brand new A7 III is just unbelievable full frame for $2,000 mirrorless. Crazy, guys. So anyways, I want to know what your thoughts are. Do you think that I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Where am I getting it right? Where am I getting it wrong? What do you think? What do you think? Let's talk about it a little bit. Do you think that Canon can possibly get it to happen? An EF lens on a mirrorless body? Larger? <laughs> Let me know. We do know, though, that there has been some sightings of Canon having a mirrorless Full frame camera out there and some of the pros are using it. Now, I haven't seen it yet because they don't like me, <laughs> but I wish they would because I would like to take a look at it. And of course, then it'd be NDA'd, a non-disclosure, and yeah, I wouldn't be able to tell you anyway. So we'll just continue speculating and providing rumors. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I want to know what your thoughts are. And that's really about it. If you enjoy my content, as always, please throw me a big thumbs up. That would be stellar. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you can get all my content when it becomes available. Click the little notification bell icon so when it does become available, you are notified of it. And finally, as I always say, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find a lot of photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years, and hopefully there's something there that you might like. Please pick it up and support me. That would be awesome. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. We'll see you in the next one. Happy shooting. Take care, guys.